Be a civil service insider has exclusively revealed that a woke counter-terrorism course is being delivered to civil servants. It warns them that labelling terrorism as terrorism is problematic because it implies moral judgment. It's then asked participants to consider Hamas as, wait for it, freedom fighters. I'm joined now by the former civil servant who brought this story to light, Anna Stanley. Anna, thank you very much indeed for joining us. Welcome to the Independent Republican, Mike Graham. Um, we've been talking about Thanks. this story all day today on uh, on Talk TV, so I'm very pleased that, that we're able to get you on to actually give it some context. I mean, it seems incredible that senior civil servants from the Foreign Office, the Department of uh, Defence, the Home Office, would be going to these kind of seminars at King's College um, almost because they've been ordered to do so. So listen to this kind of claptrap. I mean, what did you make of it all? I mean, to be honest, um, first of all, thanks for having me on. I'm such a fan of your show, and I know Thank my mum is too. Um, to be honest, the response to my uh, article has been really uh, vindicating and affirming because, to be quite honest, um, I was really the only person in the room, it felt like, um, who thought there was quite um, a lot of things wrong mm. with the teaching um, and a lot of things that, yeah, I was privy to there. Um, and so, yeah, it was very existentially depressing and, and quite alienating to be on that course and, mm. and feel, uh, feel that. Um, so, yeah, it's been really affirming um, knowing that there's a lot of people who agree that what went on and what was said by some of the lecturers was really... Um, quite appalling and worrisome. Yeah. And when you say you were one of the few people who sort of seemed to find that it was a bit weird and something wrong was going on, what was everybody else doing then? Does that, are you saying that many of the civil servants who were there were sort of nodding along sagely? Yeah, I mean, people really seemed to be enjoying it quite a lot. I mean, like I said in the article, there was one occasion uh, where one of the attendees professed on two different occasions, actually, that... One, her brother was uh, radicalised um, as a jihadi in Syria. And then later on that she knew someone who was actually on a jihadi advertisement. Um, and even that I was quite gobsmacked mm. by, um, especially because she wasn't saying it in a way that was kind of um, embarrassed or anything like that. Uh, and as for the lecturer, Peter, uh, Professor Newman, um, the comment that he made about uh, Douglas Murray and Joe Rogan about wanting them to be suppressed. Um, I was so shocked when I heard that. I was really taken aback. Um, and honestly, throughout the course, I was constantly looking around the room, kind of like mouth agape. And I just wasn't getting any feedback from anyone else um, that they found it at all concerning. Yeah, well, Douglas Murray has actually spoken to us today as well. And I think we can see what he has to say about what he's discovered, because he's pretty shocked. I think he's contacting his lawyers, apart from anything else. Yeah. I would like King's College London to... Oh, sorry. Have we missed that? <laughs> Douglas. No, uh, we'll get um, Douglas back in a minute. Yeah. Oh, we have got it. Yeah, let's do it. I would like King's College London to carry out an urgent review and I would like them to suspend Peter Newman, the man in question, until we find out exactly why he was doing this, what he meant by it. It's deeply sinister. I've got my lawyers looking into this already. I would like the government to look into it. I'd like King's College London to look into it. I think that's fair enough because, um, you know, sort of stopping somebody's views being um, shared by other means because you can't block yeah. them on social media. What did you think he meant? It's, it's really scary. I mean, to be honest, I can completely identify with why <laughs> Douglas Murray is, is taking that kind of action. Um, I think it's, it's less to do with the, the professor as a person um, and more to do with what he represents and the type of ideological world view that he represents. I don't think he explicitly intended um, those words to be as sinister as they sound. I really think um, he kind of just spoke, you know, ad lib very freely and really just kind of revealed um, the type of thoughts um, and inclinations that a lot of people have um, within academia, um, this inclination towards suppress uh, suppressing people they deem to be far right. Um, and that is how he portrayed Douglas Murray and Joe Rogan. Um, as well as um, the, pre the reviewer of Prevent, William Shawcross, um, as referring to all counter-terrorism professionals as woke. He's of that ilk, he said. 
Um, so I completely understand why Douglas Murray is taking those steps, um, but I think it represents a wider problem. And the fact that uh, this lecturer felt comfortable enough to say this to civil servants yeah. and that no other civil servant mentioned anything is, is deeply concerning. It really is. And stay where you are if you, moment, if you would, because I want to just bring in my panel, political commentator Mike Indians here, um, video comment editor and Telegraph Steve Edgington, and author and journalist Laura Dosworth. Laura, let me just start with you. I mean, um, does the woke academ academia now consider it to be sort of de rigueur to say that Hamas are freedom fighters and, and Israel is a terrorist state? Is that now sort of the, uh, the, the, the considered opinion of uh, academics in Britain? Of course it is. We saw that as soon as the attacks happened on the mm. 7th of October. We had student unions sending around awful, nasty, glib cartoons of paragliders, which were just downright racist and harassing towards uh, the Jews among their, um, you know, their student unions who are normally encouraged to have space, safe spaces. We saw academics around the world tweet things like decolonization is not a metaphor. What did you think it meant? I mean, the rot is very deep. And Anna's expose um, in the Fathom Journal is absolutely excellent. And it's a huge red flag. And it shows that this flag has been planted very deeply mm. by woke ideologues who are running the show in British institutions and even at the heart of the government and the civil service. What was obvious in Anna's article, you know, the fact that they can't distinguish between a freedom fighter and a terrorist shows that they've become completely morally flaccid. This sort of conversation about, oh, what's the difference between a freedom fighter and a terrorist is the kind of thing you expect an A-level student in a sixth form mm. common room to talk about. Yeah. In a democratic society in which free speech is the bedrock, you change the society using lawful methods. Terrorists use unlawful intimidation and violence to force political change. The difference is very clear. Yeah. And the fact they would describe Hamas as freedom fighters is deeply concerning. But this is not an isolated report. You know, on your show, many times we've talked about the kind of moral flaccidity and wokery in the civil service. Um, a few examples just, you know, just recently, Last year, the Research Information and Communication Unit put together a list of books which would be triggered as right-wing extremism. Yeah. It included recent troublemaker Douglas Murray, but also George Orwell, Aldous Huxley, C.S. Lewis, Tolkien. You know, if the idea that reading Narnia makes you a right-wing right -wing extremist, yeah. according to people who work for the government, you are in serious trouble. And the Counter-Disinformation Unit during COVID was monitoring scientists, journalists, and even MPs mm. for dissent. Not the type of dissent that you think that those sorts of people should be worried about, such as wearing um, suicide vests. Yeah, or, or, or actually, or yeah, or propagating people. violence. No, yeah. no. Doing things, because, you know, my name was one of the people that came up in subjects mm. access requests as well. Doing things like criticising the government for weaponising fear to make people yeah. follow the rules, or perhaps questioning the validity of vaccine mandates. In other words, being patriotic British citizens, asking questions and yeah. holding the government to exactly account. Exactly right. I'm going to bring you guys in in a very short second, but let me just go back to Anna quickly. Anna, I mean, when you were in the civil service and you were talking to these people on a daily basis, did you have any idea that this was whole, this whole kind of framework of government had changed somehow? Um, I mean, I don't know when it changed, but I think it's it's been like that for a very long time, probably much longer than than I've been in it. Um, but I think, to be honest, it's it's commonplace. Um, it's endemic and it's absolutely part of policy um, and that's both going from academia and within civil service I'm afraid. Yeah and the Hamas as as freedom fighters sort of idea have you ever had conversations with anybody in the civil service about that? No I mean I think maybe it was slightly more nuanced um, than shown there in the sense that they were saying that there are a lot of people who believe that and that was also within the context of saying that Israel is an example um, of it, that can, it can be viewed as an example of a terrorist state. Um, but I think it's deeply shameful, um, given the atrocities on the 7th of October, that there are bunches of civil servants who are in counterterrorism and they can't call counterterrorism for what it is when they see it and are instead focusing and putting weight on issues that are really not of vital importance when there are issues of vital importance. We're seeing massive problems with extremism on our streets in the UK at the moment. It's deeply unsettling and it's very scary to be Jewish 
at the moment in the UK. And I'm afraid that the types of things that are being taught to civil servants, things that uh, one of the slides read, terrorism is not the problem, rather the systems they oppose are terrorist. Those types of views are unfortunately um, really applicable often to Israel, wrongly, of course. But I think that type of unconscious um, influence is very damaging uh, to people who are informing and making policy um, internationally. Yeah, absolutely. Anna, great to see you. Thank you very much indeed for talking to us.